I don't know that their status as a 501c6 allows them to avoid having to go through the advertising requirements under the code. I mean, any, any government land property, if, you have, if you're going to allow someone to utilize it, you advertise so that everyone essentially has, has an opportunity or you allow a Allow an agent to place that, but but even then, that's that's a very rare circumstance. You should be able to find this out in three or four days' time, should you? Not how we could maybe do this if it's possible. Um, yeah, I mean, you can you can certainly grant the authority to move forward with advertising in the event that the, uh, in the event that the only expectation imposed upon them would be. Pro rata share of utility expenses. And that's my understanding of what's being proposed. Yes. Those are being utilized down there. Well, they, well, they you'd apply, have to apply, but that doesn't mean they're approved. Right. Okay. And that's the other side of it is um, you don't have to take what, what you're doing is, is when you put something out there, generally you're looking at lowest and most responsive. Those two things are not always, they don't always coincide with one another. And in a situation like this, the city can uh, justify the reason for having the economic development corporation within its building. Which is easy to do. Well, it's, it, it's certainly, there's, a, there's a, a great deal of uh, uh, sense to be made by having that located here from the central locations here. Uh, it, it, uh, there's, there's, it could be a poor decision. I mean, the, the issue becomes, well, what's, what's the criteria? You know, for, for non-governmental units being located right kind of now. In this particular circumstance, you may say the criteria for us is to generate economic development, and we want them located here. Um, other non, or other uh, not-for-profits may say, well, we think the criteria should also be. That, or we should fit in a criteria as well. I mean, that, that's kind of the issues that, that arise. So you can find that out maybe, but I, I can, yeah, I mean, my inquiry only changes by the fact that there's no rent. So if, whatever office space it is. Um, but with their only obligation being to pay their per rata share of the system expenses. Yeah. 
Their average is real close to what Donnie came up yeah, with. Close. Some stuff. She, uh, I think she took over the last year and looked at it. And uh, she was wanting to request $6,239.30. Six thousand two hundred thirty-one dollars and thirty-nine cents. Check out the website. Do you understand the reason that they used the extra water? In, in the fact that the uh, water did not go through wastewater treatment plant. If we were to make them pay for the whole thing, they'd be paying for something. That it is in. That it is in. Right. So I will make the motion that their payment be the, their average. So that much. That's what we're going to say. Yeah. 231, That would be the credit to get them back to their average. Okay. That's the adjustment. Yes. I'm going to give that to my set of dollars. You can keep the change in there. That was a three month average that I figured, they figured in a year. And then we went back to only sewer insurance to pick up the water. There was actually insurance sewer to pick up the water. I'm second. Small in the big picture, but it all adds up. Yeah. And trying Jeff, to do a there, uh, you want to get the other one? Mm -hmm. in mind for the Duke okay. easement. Okay. Uh, I should have received copies of an easement from Duke Energy uh, to relocate the you know, electric lines across the cross the electric line. Yeah, I wanted to ask a question here real quick. Um, when was the decision made to? Uh, Change the location of the new building? Uh, shortly after we just had the engineers come in, I guess I'm working on engineering, came back, showed them the new lot, and asked them how much it would save to move it out there. Uh, the city council approved it? No, there's no approval on that. They're, they have money allocated. Yeah. So no one has to make a uh, decision on the change of location. This is what you have to make this up. I guess it's, yeah, you have to make this up. It's, it's city property. I mean, we go through the top step. Basically, the justification of the move was uh, to put the building down at the lower ele elevation down by the plant. And we had approximately $90,000 in the retaining wall that had to be built along the edge of the creek to retain that building so it wouldn't wash down the creek during heavy rainfalls. And then the other was on that lot, we also had a 36 inch abandoned sewer line that would have to be either routed closed dug up and taken out because it's not used but it would run under where the building would be built. So that would probably be another twenty thousand dollars to get that removed or grab it closed. Uh, the other was just the uh, ease of building to building. The upper location is a lot with a larger lot, it's a lot flatter. Uh, in fact the tree removal is easy enough to do that. The lower lots are a lot smaller trees have to have someone come in and clear it. Uh, we figure around ten thousand dollars on excavation extra. What about parking, Joe? Parking, uh, we'll have uh, a little more access as far as street parking on a good building. The other one we would have had uh, four four parking spaces on the driveway coming down. The rest would have to come back and park. Uh, on the newer building, we'll have parking in the front. 
those are very positive answers. Um, yeah, the other one, thing. One question. Okay. The people who will be using that building, your employees, did you get any feedback from them? Most positive and negative. Some would like to see us stay down below. Too close? A little closer to the plant. Okay. Uh, some, basically, some of the lab guys would like to see a little closer. Uh, but they'll still have to make the routes for the truck or uh, gator or something like that to get their samples because you can't carry them together. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the you know, place would be fine. We're, now, we're so kind of congested right now. So do you understand that the building wind will be inside the gate? Yeah. It will be outside the right. up the hill. Yeah. So if you want to make it where you can grow more if you need to or expand someday for whatever reason, then on the top of the hill, better parking. There will be to get to if you need to. That's if you said they have put their samples in the truck anyway. to relocate the building. Do you 
would be to do the energy. You said two things. So do, do the energy first, and then we do the relocation of the building based on the agreement with Duke Energy. If the board's comfortable with moving forward with the C, then you can do the relocation of the C. Um, again, contingent upon the easement being re reported, but Jeff has negotiated the terms of the new easement, and it's our understanding that Duke is, is agreeable to the easement as it's set forth. So they're, they're likely to be. Duke will sign off on the easement once the board approves it, and then the relocation will commence. They're charging the wastewater for uh, moving, relocating the lines, but then we also have to give them the easement. Is it all right to approve moving the building? What's the cost for the For the $1,000. Okay. That's all right. the whole cost for the easement and everything. So yeah, let's figure it out. Yeah, the easement, the easement and relocation will on the public cost. Jim brings up a good point. I mean, it's not necessarily an item. It's more of an implied item on the agenda than it is set forth in express order. So, if the board would like to readdress the relocation issue in October, then we'll certainly do that. But there won't be a relocation unless there's an approval of the easement. So, if we made a motion to approve the easement pending the the board approves the, the relocation of the building, and we we'll put that on next month's agenda. I, I believe that's all right. Then I think that I mean Jeff, I don't know how that holds you up on the relocation issues, but uh, really doesn't. Once they approve uh, the easement, and it's spending the thirty-one thousand dollars, and I can contact him. I'll give him a signed copy to e the easement to do. It'll be a month before they relocate anyway. And this cost is what is paid back to the hundred and ten million. I'll make the motion that we approve the easement uh, pending that the board approves the relocation of the Just look at the, the pages with the four, the four 
bold numbers on the bottom. Uh, beds were extremely close. Uh, on the regular paving, Omero was 228,905.42. Road was two hundred twenty nine thousand three twenty one forty nine. Uh, milestone two forty four six eighty nine and change. Uh, the other project, East Liberty Circle, is one that's being done with county TIF funds. That have been allocated in regards to Honda. Uh, the what the spread is a little wider one point four one thirty two one forty eight. And then the bottom one is Freeland Road, which is something that's going to be presented to the local TIF tomorrow evening. They came in at 105, 125, and 158. So uh, Omera was actually low on all three phases, but very, very close on the first one. And my recommendation is Gordon, we go ahead and award it to Omera for the 2011 phase. Questions? going to be a little more involved is we had the Commerce Drive which is off Montgomery Road the industrial area we have a terrible pavement section out there in other words we, we've approved a lot of places around town the same way for Liberty Circle we approved them for residential and then we've allowed the industry to come in through request to the BCA or the APC and we end up with heavy truck traffic on a road that's meant for cars and pick up trucks and we want to have Someone uh, we provide the traffic, but we will not touch Freeland Road. If you'll notice on the bottom of any of the sheets under Project 3, it says contractor will provide traffic control. The last time that was done in that area, there was a lot of unhappy people, and nobody really wants to go out there and be screaming and yell that for a couple of days. So that all the contractors had to include in their bid being responsible for maintenance traffic on the Freedom Road portion. Most of our streets are residential. Um, the Commerce Drive isn't bad. The Liberty Circle is going to be done in halves, the east half, the west half, so we can pretty well maintain traffic. And they're also going to be. That is a large horseshoe off of Vandalia Road. goes all the way back to where we had a concrete plant driving concrete trucks on a residential pavement area and they pretty much destroyed it during the Honda construction. That's part of the justification for getting that money from the Honda tip to pay for that project. We can't. We got a trucking company located back there. We've changed zoning ordinances and allowed them to go back there so we can't keep them all up. So what we're doing is we're not going to take away the existing material. We're going to go in and patch the, what they call full depth patching, the areas that are really in poor condition. They'll take material out, put stone about eight inches of asphalt in those patches. We're going to leave everything else that's halfway decent, and then we're going to apply another four inches of material over the top of it to add strength and to reinforce the road. So 
Exactly. session. last resort, not hiring new people that's already been approved. But until we know where we stand out on our budget, you know, I, I have concerns. I have that concerns. Well, you, you know, we can approve it and then not hire the person. But how do we cut cost? You know, we're looking at things we can get picked the council or JPs there. Two or three hundred thousand to go. 
we reduce That's better news than what I was thinking. Um, if I take off the 200000 out of one item next year, you'll have at least another 200000 So we're 400 shy. I, I've got the figures in on gadget and and, and initial picture. Our, our budget's been reduced once again last year, this year. safety. No, I don't want to cut public safety. You know, it's going to take a long time to get this point. Well, it's up to the other side of that too. It's going to have some of the safety. Yeah, it's okay. Right. Because we're hard now, so we have nothing to come on. At or, least. At least. So maybe they'd just be coming for two months and then be laid off. Is your not approved to us? It's got to be in by November second or third, if I'm correct. But we're going to have we're going to pass ours by the end of October. That's the reason why we want all that doing by hand. And um, it'll probably be.
The main thing you're looking at here is, is did the gentleman pass the interview? Because I don't believe you've done that yet because you had to wait until this meeting, correct, to give him the approval. Then the next part of it is, is are you going to offer him a conditional offer of employment, which is no. So the main thing is, is if you get, I mean, if you can say, okay, and I don't even remember what the gentleman's name is, if he passed, then that's where you leave it at. You just don't you just don't make the conditional offer of employment until such a time as the budget comes around, we figure out what the numbers are and so on, and then at that point then you would make the conditional offer of employment. But I think the main thing that needs to be done here is is does he move forward or does he not move forward from the from the interview? Well, but I mean five months from now we may be looking at a different picture. He may not be available, he may not be position, so I think you're but you've got a young man sitting out here right now that's not sure if he passed the interview or not. I think he's been notified that he has passed the interview. He's, <clears throat> he's the candidate we've been hired next to. Pending nothing changes right. between now and then. I need to withdraw my motion. Well, a couple things. Now, I think uh, uh, I think you've got a motion out there. We need to vote it up. But I think to Scott's point, and, and to what's being, I think I tried to indicate this earlier, is, is there's an issue of who was it that you selected as, as, the, as the pick, not necessarily who you're going to offer the job to. And I wouldn't, I would not recommend doing a, a conditional offer. A lot of things can change. I mean, you may have the money in the budget, but something else may change. Uh, right now, he may be the proper candidate, but I don't know that you want to have a queue for six months because any number of things that we, we're not contemplating change. You can notify him he's the selected candidate um, and that, but before any offer can be made, we're going to find out we're going to get on this one first and then um, and, and, and go from there. But I, I don't. I, I see some real problems with making a conditional offer. We're sitting and leaving it open for six months. My question, real quick, then: we interviewed six, six people, uh, five, five total. Uh, five total. So there were uh, basically you know, the, out of that, there's five people. There's three we didn't select. What do we tell them? Do we notify them already? We have notified them. Because again, with the fire department, we have, we interviewed individuals for the fire department, and we chose. We didn't choose them all, but yet I was still kind of guided that if something happened, I still had these people that I could go for. So we did not make conditional offer of employments to those two individuals. Just let them know that they moved up. And we just we just let them know that they did move into the next step of the hiring process, which the next step would be conditional offer of employment. But right now you're just not you're just not extending that right now. I, I just want to be careful how we say it because you know if we we go to that and then six months from now there's something that happens on that this gentleman's background. Um, and you could probably put it as you're moving forward in the hiring process. That's that's it. And then if you come up with another hiring process a year down the road and take apps and everything. He would be encouraged to participate in that. That way, you're not binding yourself to anything with this individual. I, I, I don't concur. I, mean, I, just, I just think I don't think it's a safe practice to offer somebody a job six months. You know, a lot of things can happen, and we don't want to be bound by having an extended offer of employment to somebody that's, that's circumstances do change. Yeah. You do have a, you do have a uh, motion out there. Uh, probably needs to be uh, restated, but uh, offer the 
conditional conditional okay change motion well it's it's been second you can i mean i think you can amend i think the i think the, uh, the regular course is to, if it's been second you can you withdraw it if you like uh, or you can vote on it no, Actually, interesting. I think you owe the motion to Can I just interject one other thing to put that in there, but also put in until the next process begins, because this way you're not tied to it. If in a year's time you take applications again, this guy can then come up and say, oh, wait a minute, you said I was, I was in the process to be hired. Okay, just he's, he's still in the hiring process until the next process begins. One thing this does, even if you don't offer conditional offer of employment, it gives her the opportunity that if something comes up and another officer leaves or there's another position that comes open, she can move forward right away with that. Again, there's no conditional offer of employment taking place at this time. But in a week, and again, how often have, I mean, how quick have we seen somebody come in and decide they're leaving? In a week or two. In a week or two. This gives her the opportunity to have the ability to move forward and run this person right through without having to re-interview, without having to do all of that. What you're saying, we're going to say you can hire this person whenever it's a good opportunity. I don't understand that. <laughs> Again, to my point, I, I would just recommend that your motion stands to you is that applicant number five is, is past the interview process um, um, is eligible to have 
Pardon me. He's eligible for employment. Be eligible for employment uh, unless or until the, the next uh, interview process takes place. And then, I mean, again, I think Scott brings up a great point. We, for whatever reason, we lose an officer to the relocation or what have you. It's not necessary to go back to the application. It seems like there are a bit time limits. Until the next until the next application process will begin for that I'm trying to say it's good for two years or well you look at that annual equation so until the next April process until the next April well, the next application process for well. okay I think this is taking us some extra time, but it also proves that we will discuss things prior to the meeting. It's not cut dry. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Well, we were operating under the assumption that we had most of the firm officers in the fire. And Bob, you're right. The Bombo had some of the short and we clean or reserve. So what's he say now exactly? Well, you can check, figure out what I've got here. <laughs> I feel it's Act Cup number five has the interview stage and is eligible for employment until the next application process begins for 2012. See? That's what I have. You, you probably don't even understand what I've got here. Yeah, that's <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I got one here goes to that part. Any more discussion? Yes, sir. No. Rob Cole, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Rodney. Jamie. Yes. Steve. Yes. Gary. Yes. Clarification, I was not at the last interview meeting. Mr. Mark Foster Camper. Drop quotes. 